Act Investor here, bringing you another independent analysis. And this time we're taking a look at CompuGen LTD, ticker symbol CGEN, C G E N. And this is a one day chart, each count representing one day of trading. And today we're looking at a chart of moving averages going from the blue 10, the green 20, yellow 50, orange 100, and the red 200 day moving average. So let's take a look at the chart here and just see what kind of data we can pull from this. So right away, this top corner, we go back to December 31st. And actually I did cut that out. This is actually beginning right uh, on January. I believe that was January 3rd, the first day of trading we had of the new year. So you can see we had a period of lower lows right off the bat for really consolidating down here. And then right around February, uh, February 15th, that's when things started turning around and we began getting those beautiful higher lows and CGEN has been in a wonderful uptrend ever since those February lows. It's turned around very well. You can see we were touching right around $4.30 on the very low of February. We're way back up here at $6.60. Pretty much a 50 to 60% increase. It's very nice. So let's just draw a trend line and see really what's this uh, uptrend looking like. So you can see that the uptrend is confirmed in multiple places here on the chart. Let's just kind of outline those. So we have our candles touching right here, right here, and right here. Now what that does is that confirms the uptrend. The more candles we have touching that, the stronger that uptrend is, the more confirmed it is. And not only that, but you can see that when those candles did hit, they bounced right off. It came back, touched the trend line, bounced off, and now it's also on the trend line today. And if it continues this period of higher higher lows, we will see it bounce off that trend line as well. Now that said, let's also confirm this uptrend a little bit more. We can do that by looking at the relative strength index down here on the bottom. So what I'm gonna be looking at is where we went oversold. So let's just start with, well, let's just go all the way back. This is to January 11th, where we went oversold. Our next oversold is all the way here in March. And our next oversold is here in April. Now you can see this oversold point is a little bit higher than that one in comparison to the candle that's touching. And that's because the uptrend wasn't really confirmed in this area yet. We were still a little bit um, in, in a little bit of a recovery from those February lows, even though we were at a pretty nice increase. You know, we, around here we are at about five dollars and forty cents compared to those lows around the mid 40s of February. But if we take a look at the most recent oversold points, you'll see that that's much, 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 much higher. And the fact that we went oversold at a higher share price indicates that we're in an uptrend. So we have that beautiful trend line confirming the uptrend. We have our higher lows confirming the uptrend. And we have that higher oversold point also confirming the uptrend. Now let's take a look at some of the moving averages that we have on this chart. Moving averages, of course, being those colored lines I mentioned earlier in the video. So the ideal pattern for us to see is going to be this. We want to see blue over green over yellow over orange over red that's the ideal pattern that we want to see we want to have the faster moving average over the slower moving averages so what we have on this chart right now going on we have the 200 day red moving average starting to leg down it just has to beat that orange 100 day moving average now but everything else is falling into a beautiful pattern we have the yellow above the red above the orange we just need that red to be below those two aside from that we want that blue to be above the green and it was above the green during this entire uptrend if you take a look and only recently the last couple days we've had a bit of selling off in CompuGen and that 10 day moving average has crossed below the 50 period moving rather the 20 period moving average that green line so what do I want to see happen to start seeing this thing leg up well, one of those things has already happened. That's the relative strength index down here at the bottom. I want to see that push up over the 20 line 
And it started to do that on the fast moving average of the relative strength index. Then we want to see that slow average also increasing its way up. So once those are both over the 20 line, we'll be pushing our way to that 80 line. And once we're over the 80 line, that's when we're really bullish. If you take a look, this whole time we were over uh, overbought right here. That's when we were running up. Um, so yeah, we want to see that break the 20 line and we want to see it push over that 80 line ideally. Uh, as we see that happening, we want to see this green line cross right back below the blue line. We want that blue line to be on top. And lastly, we want that red line to be below the orange and the yellow. So we want the 200 day moving average to be all the way at the bottom. And we want the 10 day fast moving average to be all the way at the top. And lastly, we want to see the candles above all the moving averages. You can see when they were above all the moving averages here, we had a nice run up. And now that we're below them, that's when we've kind of been consolidating down. So let's just kind of take a look at some areas of support and resistance. So we absolutely have support here at $6.40. You can see it's been tested multiple times on this chart. We were testing it here and we bounced off. Then it became resistance here. Uh, we tested it here and we couldn't break it on the, that day, but the next day it did push up. And now we're once again bouncing off. So the $6.40 mark is very significant. We need to hold that to hold our, our support, provided that we hold that support our next area of resistance is right around $7.20. Now let's just see if I can make that line a little bit cleaner. So it's not confirmed as much as that support line, but we did test it here as support and then tested it as resistance. And we of course tested it as resistance a lot over there. So that's indicating that it is definitely a pivot point um, it's not confirmed as, as much as that $6.40 area, as I mentioned, but it's definitely confirmed. So that would be my price target in the short term, provided that relative strength index legs up over 20, pushes up over 80, provided the moving averages all fall into place. My price target for CGen in the short term is going to be $7.20. And then if that does hit, I will do another video and analyze this a little bit further back with some uh, more historical data so we can get some more accurate price targets on where to move next. Now let's see what might happen if this $6.40 mark actually does break and we push down below it. It looks like our next area of support would be right around $6 really. $6 mark has a lot of action in it. We've confirmed it over here, over here, over here, and that is good enough for me to count that as a pivot point. Um, I've also looked on the data past this chart and that was a pretty significant area. Not only that, but $6, anytime you have a flat amount like that, there's a bit of a psychological uh, support slash resistance in mind when you get an even number like that. So if this breaks $6.40, look for a bounce around the $6 mark. Further confirming that is actually gonna be the moving averages. You can see these moving averages are all really just hanging around that $6 area. And the 200 day moving average itself is right at $5.90. And occasionally these areas can act as support as well. So right around that $6 mark is where we're looking for our support provided $6.40 breaks. And if $6.40 holds, we're looking for resistance up here at $7.20. Now that's all I have to say about CGen right now. I look forward to seeing what this company brings in the future and seeing if it tests those areas of resistance and where we can go after that. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, feedback area down at the bottom of this video. I'd be more than happy to take a look and answer any questions you might have. And if not, I will talk to you in the next video. Take care.